Fine, thank you. And you? It's so yeah. fine. Yeah. Uh, you listen just, well. Now uh, we will just wait for five minutes uh, for the participants to join. I have no audio, please. Okay, now, now yes, now yes, now yes. very bad excuse me the audio it's very bad
फालतू तो Is it okay now, sir? Now, yes, but when you go to the microphone in the room, I didn't uh, listen to nothing. Okay, okay. Uh, so let me uh, present from here. So our today's keynote speaker is Professor Dr. Alessandro Pereiro. authored more than 220 scientific papers on prestigious index international journals and national and international proceedings he is included in the stanford list of the best influencer researcher of the years 2019 2020 and 2021 in the world he serves as editor member of the editorial board and reviewer for many web of science scopus index international scientific journals and as evaluator of national and international research projects he cooperates with numerous international universities and prestigious research centers he is the member of the phd committee in industrial engineering university of salerno and production and industrial design polytechnic university of madrid sp from 2018 he serves as vice president of the international advisory board of the zec university of life science in prague zeki zekia he is member of the international federation for the promotion of mechanisms and biotribology biomechanics in silico wear calculation of artificial human synovial joints but they are also include dynamics of mechanical systems noise and vibration measurements mechanical measurement and diagnostic on mechanical systems with this introduction i warm heartedly welcome professor dr alessandro ragerio thank you sir for joining sir you can now proceed with your keynote presentation thank you thank you shaitan mahatma thank you for your kind words and presentation thank you to all and a, a big big wishes to all in the room okay good morning to everybody good morning it's a pleasure for me to stay with you i hope you listen to me well i don't know i hope yes and i will try to share my screen okay do you do you do you see Do you see the screen? Yes, I think yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Okay. First of all, good morning or good evening. I don't know what is your time. For me, is middle morning to everybody. And uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank you very much, all the chief patrons and patrons of these. Uh, very interesting international conference also i would to thank very much the organizing committee for giving me the opportunity to deliver this uh, keynote lecture thank you to all it's i am very proud for this well after the presentation uh, very kind presentation i received my name as uh, you know is alessandro ruggiero and i'm a professor of tribology and applied mechanics at the department of industrial engineering of university of salerno in italy i don't know if uh, you can see i have just a very quick short uh, video presentation of my university i hope you you will uh, do you listen the audio? Yes, sir. The geographical position of the University of Salerno makes it the yes. ideal location for a campus university as it is within easy reach of both Salerno and Avellino and the relative motorway exits. It is a campus which is in constant evolution, 
More teaching rooms and research laboratories have recently been added to the existing ones. Today, we have 208 lecture rooms, a total of 17,802 seats, and research laboratories, which are spread out throughout the campus for a total area of 22,000 square metres. The campus is surrounded by gardens and landscaped squares for a total area of 258,000 square metres. This we try to be as environmentally friendly as possible and so use solar panels, solar cooling systems, photovoltaic and cogeneration methods to save energy and we are currently producing 30% of our total energy needs. Our university residences are modern and provide everything that students could need. We currently have 628 beds available for students and teaching staff and another 152 are currently being built. The university canteen can seat up to 1,300 people and it makes around 3,000 meals a day. To make life on campus as pleasant as possible, we offer various sporting facilities, an indoor swimming pool, three five-a-side football pitches and astroturf, a tennis court, two multifunction courts, a climbing wall, a cycle path, and a 1,200 square metre gym where it's possible to play basketball, volleyball, table tennis, do gag and tone, step, total body workout, etc. The main university library, the Cayanello Library, was inaugurated in 1997 and is home to publications which were previously housed in the library belonging to the Faculty of Mathematics, Physics, Engineering and Pharmacy. This office enables students to make the most suitable choices regarding their course. It also offers advice and support during their degree, as well as helping and advising new graduates approach the world of work. The office has an information point which is open all year round. Uh, sir, the video is not audible. The Erasmus uh, office is yeah, responsible for audible. exchange students and teaching staff coming to study at the University of Salerno, as well as placing our own students and teaching staff in other European universities. It is also responsible for collaboration with institutions and research centres in Europe and beyond. Our nursery can, can accept up to 60 children from the ages of three months to three years. 
it is open to the children of university staff, students and residents of Fichang. The university has its own radio station whose aim is to instruct, inform and entertain. It also videotapes conferences, seminars and lessons and also publishes these online. The University of Salerno was the first university in Italy to develop its own TV company. There are 60 monitors, each 46 inches, and a video wall informing students and staff of what is happening on campus. Students don't just come to the University of Salerno to study, they come to experience different situations in different contexts. Okay, I hope to see you soon in Salerno as soon as possible for visiting me and visit our faculty. Okay, let's go ahead with the presentation. My presentation today is titled Recent Advances in the Computational Modeling of Total Heap Replacement Biotribology. Uh, this uh, research activity was developed by myself from many years, more than 15 years, in uh, cooperation with uh, other universities, but above all with the Rizzoli Orthopedic Institute, which is a very famous Italian, but also European, I, and I think in the world, hospital and the research center in the fields of, uh, first of all, uh, orthopedy. Well, the motivation of my long investigation, uh, which is, of course, the number of the hip disease, as well the amount of the economic resource dedicated to this surgery are constantly growing in Italy, but in all the world. This uh, surgical procedure, thanks to the excellent clinical results obtained in the last years, evolved hurriedly to solve the generative disease on the skeletal joint. After total or partial joint replacement, the articular function are fully restored and the patients return to a pain-free condition. In this framework, it becomes necessary to guarantee that new prosthetic design, mainly in terms of geometry and materials, have to be deeply analyzed and tested before the clinical trials begin. Joint implants developed from the human body require special consideration of safety and accuracy. A preclinical validation of these medical devices is necessary in order to establish their resistance above all to ice with body tissues. Of course, the validation of a new joint design is linked to the improvement of performances, both from a biomechanical and tribological point of view. In addition, new medical devices are tested in clinical trials to confirm that the prototype does not compromise the patients. Moreover, these new medical devices have to provide the expected results uh, despite the physiological and uh, how to see pathological variability of the target population. In recent years, many efforts have been made to improve both biomaterials and the design of new prosthetic couplings. The fundamental tools for the evaluation of a prosthetic design are the multicentric outcome registries. These registries offer important information regarding any complication or event related to a joint prosthesis. These registries are an indispensable tool for analyzing the behavior of a prosthesis based on the evidence of critically observed retrievals. Considering the wide range of implants and surgical technique, the difference in the performances of the different prosthetic solution can be observed as statistically significant only 
if many national centers enrich their registers. But, however, a new modern trend for the validation of a prosthetic device is to use biomechanical and tribological models more and more accurate for the characterization of prosthetic contact. This approach can be carried out throughout the development of theoretical and numerical computational models validated through in vitro experiments. In last years, several theoretical and numerical models have been already proposed in order to model every possible scenario of the in vivo configuration. This model constitutes a first step toward the preclinical validation of processes with a reduction of budgets and times. With the aim to highlight actual research trend toward the challenges of having accurate numerical algorithm to be used both in preclinical testing and in the optimization of the process design, in uh, this uh, lecture, in this uh, keynote lecture, I will depict some of the actual scientific framework, but I will focus on my research activi activities in this framework, then mainly in the realization of accurate computational model, which merge together biomechanics and biotribology. Let's have a look in general to a uh, human joint. Human joint are, of course, uh, joint which have uh, a lot of fun. First of all, uh, uh, um, there are, of course, uh, uh, fibrous joints or cartilaginous joint, or uh, we can have synovial joint, which are the most use friction during movement. This is the natural joint we have in our body. Of course, uh, it is a very complicated uh, tribological Course, of course, it is a mixing of uh, this. It is a mixing of uh, these uh, kind of models, uh, kind of models. But uh, but uh, what happens that uh, what happens that uh, arthritis is a major public health problem. Arthritis is a major public health problem in the world in the world. For example, about uh, 20 years ago, in 2003, the total cost burden of arthritis was about 128 billion in the USA and uh, lead to about proximal distal with internal external rotation and medial lateral flexion extension. Last generation of materials in autocracy are uh, of course uh, devoted to ceramic matrix, aluminum matrix, composite, analyzed to combine uh, my compatibility and stability of alumina with the stiffness of other ceramic materials, for example, biox, delta, composite material, is realized with zirconia and alumina. Polymer matrix composite with the polyethylene or ultra high nice weight polyethylene or polyethylene, polyether, keto, peak, very famous peak matrix are designed to lower the resistance. 
English uh, published the review in 2015 on composite park B engineering. Uh, there is uh, an overview, a review um, published on the advanced biomaterials. Uh, who is interested uh, could give a look to this paper. Then, biotribology. Of course, biotribology is the science devoted to the study of the tribology applied to biological system. Then, uh, hip joint is, uh, of course, uh, of the interest uh, in uh, biotribological investigation. Um, first of all, uh, of course, for understanding, for give models of this kind of joints, uh, we have to calculate the joint loading in order to achieve information about lubrication modes, biomaterials, mechanical behavior, but also it is important to give models to lubrication properties, in these cases, synovial fluid, of course. After that, the simulation, the computation, can give the artificial joint wear, which is very important uh, both for uh, arthroplasty uses as uh, loosening we saw, but also for the duration of the processes. Toward the ER, uh, the tendency was to move from in vivo to in silico experimentation on total hip replacement. Um, a, a very, a very a nice uh, description of this process uh, can be found in this uh, paper publi published on Applied Science in 2000, uh, 2020. About the measurement uh, in vivo, yes, uh, of course, uh, in vivo world derived from the Latin meaning within the living refers to the experimentation developed in living organism as opposed to those conducted on parts of the organism or in corpse. In vivo tests are often accompanied by in vitro tests to observe the overall effects of an analysis. Translating this concept into the orthopedic field, many wear assessment procedures are used to evaluate the in vivo performance of the processes. The most used diagnostic methodology for the monitoring of wear and osteolysis is the radiographic one. Radiographs are usually used to determine clinically wear by assessing the degree of penetration of surface in contact. For example, in the assessment concerning hip, hip processes, the penetration of the femoral head into the acetabular cups can be assessed using a compass necessary to identify the position of the minor eccentricity found. Hence, linear wear is the difference between the initial post-operative radiography and the most recent radiography measured in millimeters. Then, uh, of course, uh, traditional imagic, imaging techniques uh, such as radiographs are limited by poor contrast resolution and, uh, of course, by a choice about the grayscale, which is the, 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 the really problem. Then this kind of approach is strongly influenced by a single patient characteristic, but we have the possibility to control the effective processes evolution. But this, uh, it's complicated because uh, each time we need the patient to be investigated. Another approach uh, very used uh, and uh, very important uh, is uh, the simulation in vitro. In this picture, you can see one of my master thesis students involved in an in vitro experimentation at the Rizzoli Orthopedic Institute. Testing methods are uh, called also like the previous one in vitro, from, but above all, the tests have long duration and are very expensive. They utilize standardized loads that often are different from the reality. This is one of the um, most used simulator you, you can uh, look in this slide. Well, what is uh, the 
analysis we can uh, we can uh, make we can make uh, then two strategy for investigating uh, investigating about uh, above all minimum wear longevity in vitro but also by using in silico of course in silico is uh, due to the use of calculator models and then more and more accurate are the models more are the uh, better are the results in silico models typically is the joining of a multibody dynamical model uh, with the trebological model uh, above all uh, considering lubrication and the contact problems um, this is uh, the in silico global approach in which uh, we have as input the skeletal kinematic and by using the musculoskeletal inverse, inverse dynamical simulation, we achieve joint contact forces and joint relative velocities useful for running lubrication algorithms for achieving the tribological quantity of interest. Of course, in this process are involved many, many variables and parameters which can be object of optimization during the simulation. More in detail, the model uh, we developed uh, in the years is based mainly on this structure, a musculoskeletal multibody model. In the first step of my research activity, I used uh, uh, commercial software like OpenSIM or anybody for uh, make this investigation. In second part, as I will show, uh, we develop the our software written in MATLAB environment on multibody dynamic in order to have a better control of variables. After uh, calculate the load and motion, a finite element model was developed in order to study to investigate the stress strain configuration during the contact but also um, this uh, finite element model must be coupled with the lubrication model which could be elastohydrodynamic hydrodynamic or boundary and mix it in last investigation we made uh, we proposed the full configuration uh, which is mixed elasto hydrodynamic in which we are, are considered both contacts and elastodynamic film for the lubrication models uh, from a conceptual point of view, musculoskeletal model, this is a slide taken from the Anybody modeling system, which is uh, the, a commercial software we used uh, in our first investigations, uh, is uh, an algorithm which runs considering uh, the classical approach of uh, inverse dynamics, uh, in which uh, in gate analysis labs, it's possible to measure um, position data, force data, and, up, and uh, by running the inverse dynamic algorithm, uh, it's possible to achieve the loads. The problem from a dynamical point of view, it's quite uh, big because uh, we have 18, 16, 18 degree of freedom. Which then from a dynamical point of view, the motion equations are, are very complicated. Also, we have to consider that we have the muscular activation, which could be uh, modeled by particular algorithms. Uh, this is the results, for example, of uh, one classical guide uh, in which it's possible to see after the simulation uh, the contribute uh, also of the muscular activation during one step, one guide cycle, in which it's possible to see that the, in the phases in which the foot uh, is pressed against the roof, uh, there is the maximum solicitations of this kind of muscles. Uh, then after running this kind of uh, software, it's possible to determine the force component, but also the kinematics, the head rotation during one gate. Note that the input are measured data. Then from a conceptual point of view, if we have data 
of all other activities, for example, climbing, or also sportive activity like skying or buying the load acting on the joint. The approach is a classical multi-body multi approach in which the equation of motion were built uh, for uh, calculating the uh, loads necessary to the investigation. Of course, it is necessary in these cases to have an approach very rigorous from a mathematical point of view in terms of um, definition of the constraint uh, of, between the link, between the, body, the, the, the part of the body, rheonomic and scleronomic, but also it is necessary to propose models for the muscles and uh, one of the most famous muscle model uh, is the heel muscle model, uh, which was used in our investigation. Uh, a novelty uh, is the curved muscle geodesic whooping, because we consider also the attachment of the muscles around the bone. Uh, in this way, it is uh, possible with this approach, it is possible to take in account this different configuration by using the curved muscle geodesic whooping. Um, in total, uh, this is the model uh, we developed uh, for this kind of investigation. Of course, uh, it is from a mathematical point of view, very deep, very rigorous, very wide, this uh, kind of investigation. And uh, I wrote to you on this slide, on this slide um, some references uh, useful uh, for uh, go deeper uh, to this kind of approach. Uh, of course, this approach uh, was validated, was validated the respect of the commercial one in order to have an assessment of the uh, of the response of, of, of our algorithms and the, the agreement uh, I achieved was uh, was uh, very satisfactory, very satisfactory. Uh, also. Uh, with the um, Bergman loads. Uh, what are Bergman loads? Well, Bergman loads, loads are the most important references for this kind of investigation because are the ones loads measured in vivo, in vivo that are real. Then uh, uh, by comparing our calculated with the in vivo measure that Bergman, from Bergman, uh, we achieve a, a very useful information. Uh, other papers uh, we published on this kind of investigation are uh, depicted here in, in, this, in this slide. Um, after the multibody, um, the multibody, um, Modeling, it is necessary to give an assessment of the stress strain uh, of the contact between the bowl and the socket. Uh, of course, the, there are many kind uh, of uh, approaches, but uh, independent springs or convolution, but we use the finite element method. In the uh, in same way, in the first phases of our investigation, we use uh, the commercial finite element uh, model. In the second phase, uh, we developed our model of uh, finite element computation in order to be fully merged with the multibody model and also in order to control better the involved variables. In the first phases, we developed, we investigated um, this kind of coupling uh, with. Um, with classical algorithm used by in uh, ANSYS workbench, and we achieved the main information also in the cases uh, by comparing the cases of lubrication or without lubrication, but in these cases also by varying the friction coefficient inside the simulation. Also, we investigated the influence of the radial clearance, which is one of the most important parameters in this kind of uh, um, in this kind of coupling. 
for uh, have a good estimation of uh, good assessment of the friction coefficient to put inside this model a wide experimental investigation was conducted uh, uh, on uh, coupling uh, made of ultra weight molecular polyethylene and aluminum and um, titanium alloy, but also ultra weight molecular weight polyethylene and IEC uh, 316L austenitic stainless and all the results, uh, but also respected to the um, L203 ceramic under dry and lubricated in conditions. So the result uh, from one gate. Then uh, we made a lot of uh, numerical simulation in order to achieve step by step the stress strain of uh, the coupling. Yes, here are some results, some details. Mm, I think uh, we have, for example, uh, and this is a short video in which during the gate uh, it's possible to observe the stress strain state. Okay, there are many uh, output uh, uh, we have uh, that we have discussed deeply in our papers published. The last step is to introduce the lubrication. To introduce the lubrication, uh, and uh, I introduce, uh, of course, it is based on Reynolds equation. The Reynolds equation was written in spherical coordinate. Uh, and of course, the Reynolds equation is useful for uh, the modeling of hydrodynamic, of course, elastic hydrodynamic under uh, other hypotheses uh, and also mixed in which we have elasto hydrodynamic problem with the contact deformation problems. Then we uh, modulate this uh, mixed elasto hydrodynamic effect in, in which it's possible to control the eccentricity and then if the contact happen, we move to mixed model. If the contact uh, is avoided, even if by very thin film, we use the elasto hydrodynamic models. Uh, the synovial fluid uh, from a rheological point of view was modeled uh, by using uh, uh, by using in, in several approaches, we tried uh, or the Stokes couple stress theory or cross viscosity model in order to take into account the non Newtonian behavior of the synovial fluid. Uh, this is the main structure of the algorithm we developed, in which it is possible to see, for example, in, in this picture, the double convergence cycles. One cycle uh, is the convergence regarding kinematic and dynamic, and the second one is uh, the convergence regarding the lubrication models. In this way, uh, then uh, we developed uh, uh, this is the structure of the, the computational model we developed, uh, which is a, a multi-body model for hip contact force, hip angular velocity, uh, which is useful to obtain the loads and the angular velocity along the components of the three axes. And uh, in this way, it's possible to have the input for the mixed elastodynamic lubrication uh, and achieve the eccentricity of the joint. Of course, uh, this is at, at this moment, at this model, it is necessary to add the wear model. And uh, in this, uh, at the moment, to date, we add uh, the arch wear model but considering uh, geometrical gap of fluid deformation, contact deformation, uh, and the accumulated wear during the cycles. Of course, this, this could be improved, improved with the more realistic mode. Archard is very famous, very established, but nowadays there are more detailed wear models to be involved in this uh, experimental investigation. Maybe in future we will, we will for example, uh, if we have polyethylene, a cap, uh, it is interesting, it could be interesting to add uh, 
the lamination model, which is very, very interesting for, for giving an assessment of this kind of phenomena. Uh, here I show one, uh, our calculation, merging all these models, and uh, all the tiles are in these published papers. Uh, merging all these models is possible to achieve the complete in silico computational model for assessing the wear. As you see in this uh, last picture, uh, we can see the wear amount and the wear distribution uh, in the cup during uh, one gate. Wear volume and other results, we have many results. Uh, uh, of course, uh, this activity was published on many journals with on, on papers uh, well cited, and um, but we, it, it is possible to go further. More and more accurate models can be developed, and and I hope we will do it in next future. Of course, uh, one of the open issues is the surface roughness variation, which is very important for lubrication phenomena. Why? Because uh, we found uh, many in retrievals in analysis on the uh, deep paper is this uh, published of composite part B. Does metal transfer differ on retrieved Biorox Delta composites femoral heads of the investigation on three Biorox generation? Uh, but also in other investigation published on measurements, we had uh, a lot of data regarding this uh, phenomenon. Um, okay, uh, I go to conclusion because I say that I have uh, one hour uh, uh, is elapsed. Then, tribological behavior of EP implants is the key issue for improving the reliability of these elements, where being one of the main causes of their limited service life. Total hip replacement in silico wear modeling is a promising approach for substituting expensive in terms of money and time experimental wear tests necessary for the improvement of processes tribological performances. Big steps were done toward this objective, but more detailed models in terms mainly of lubrication have to be investigated for reliable mathematical models. Of course, any cooperation is welcome and uh, who is interested could contact me at uh, ruggiero at unisa.it. These are some, some the list of the paper, but is not updated. updated. There are many others uh, in the last years. Thank you for uh, your attention. And uh, if you have some questions or curiosity, I am here for giving you an answer. Thank you. Uh, very big thank you, sir. Uh, can we have some questions from the audience? Hello? Hello? Hi. Uh, can we have some questions from the audience? So, can we have some questions from the audience? Hello? Yes, there is. Uh, there is. I see. Hello? So I'm audible to you? I listen to you, but uh, I... I'm audible? Hello? Hello? Hi, listen to you. Uh, am I audible to you? Is there any questions or curiosity, Jaime? Yes, yes, I would like to ask a question, sir. I think there is Ayush Tidk. Hello? Hello? Thank you.
there any question anybody would like to ask सर इज इट ऑडिबल टू यू हेलो हेलो समय ऑडिबल टू यू डॉक्टर रुगेरियो मैं ऑडिबल यस 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 बट वेरी बैड वेरी बैड टू बी ऑनेस्ट अनफॉर्चूनेटली देयर वाज सम इशू विद द ऑडियो सो दैट्स व्हाई ओके नाउ 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 इट्स गुड आई एम एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड वेदर यू आर गेटिंग इट और नॉट इज इट ओके नाउ Okay. Okay. Now is okay. Okay. I would like to ask you a question. Uh, you, you were talking about the optimization of the prosthetics. Even after doing this analysis on a kinematic side and on dynamic side, so while going for the optimization, so what type of optimization algorithm or optimization process we usually apply? No, my optimization uh, is mainly in terms of uh, uh, geometry. For example, the radial clearance is a very important uh, parameters, but also in terms of materials. And uh, for the next future, I guess a particular texturing of the surfaces in order uh, to give an optimization of the lubrication phenomenon. Okay. Okay. And the um, next important thing is, for example, if we have a simulation process, whether it is, I mean, even after going through a, having a proper boundary conditions while uh, doing analysis with uh, maybe by using MATLAB or anybody or uh, any specific tool. So how we can validate it? So is it possible to link uh, nowadays uh, the bone printing, 3D printing is also pretty popular in prosthetics. So is it possible to link this uh, this type of uh, technology with the 3D additive manufacturing? 
Yes, I think yes. To be honest, I I don't have particular skills uh, in this kind of activity, but uh, I think I think it's possible. Of course, uh, it is necessary to investigate how to do this, but it is possible. Okay. So practically, even after doing this analysis, uh, I mean the validation is most important thing, correct? Sorry. The validation process after simulation, I'm still yes, yes. not getting it. How how we can validate it? Yes, I validated with the results obtained by the in vitro simulation simulators I showed you. Yeah, I got it, sir. Through simulation, it it, it got validated. But when we talk about any prosthetics or the model, do we really need to have a physical prototype or actual models as a, to validate it in a proper way? No, to, uh, to date I validated the, my models on uh, processes uh, we had uh, by comparing the results from the in silico simulation in terms of wear mainly because it's the most important parameter we can measure. And after that, uh, uh, in terms uh, respect to the wear obtained on processes run it on in vitro simulation okay and uh, while uh, even creating a model as we usually did uh, deal with the digital modeling process wherein we used to have a mannequin model or other type of model the similar type of model we can create in this or use this you uh, use it in this no i didn't understand excuse me because the audio stop and go <laughs> sorry uh, sorry sir can you repeat please yeah in the uh, general in digital manufacturing while even creating we usually do the digital mannequins i mean the human like models so for your analysis can we have uh, is it possible for us to import those digital mannequins to perform the analysis i guess yes but uh, it is necessary to check of course okay and one last question from my side sir when we talk about the prosthetic is more most of most of the time it is a customer specific or maybe called as a patient specific and while doing analysis whenever whenever i would like to you know put on the specific uh, conditions for the simulation so how do we get the universal model out of the simulation then but uh, usually <clears throat> The simulation, uh, the in vitro simulation are conducted uh, under international standard, which uh, declares the loads and the kinematics. Then uh, I compared the results obtained uh, from in vitro simulation by applying the international standard. And the same data of the international standard, uh, I simulate uh, uh, running my in silico models. Okay. okay. Oh, no, um, I mean, extension to this because even with the ergonomical fundamentals in Asian standards and in American standard, there are typical difference uh, as far as dimensions as concerned. So while dealing with this sort of simulation, is it going to play important role that we need to have a different boundary conditions, patient specific conditions or person specific conditions? I don't understand well, to be honest. Uh, I apologize, but uh, it's very difficult to answer in this way because uh, I don't answer. I uh, I I I listen all only some pieces of your question. Okay, okay, yeah, perfect. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I was actually talking about the application from application point of view because when we usually do now the, as I'm actually working in additive manufacturing, so when we deal with the DICOM data, CT scan data, patient specific 3D printing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, so yes, there is a yes, typical yes. difference when we talk about you know patient to patient or person to person variations are there course, in that context course. my question is there sir nothing else okay o of course of course i think uh, this uh, this approach and the tool uh, i developed during the years could be very useful uh, merge merged with uh, the, ma the additive manufacturing uh, algorithms in order to give uh, maybe an optimal design uh, to be proposed for future but this is a future this is necessary investigation of course if you want if you desire or or if someone 
in the room desires to have a cooperation on this topic with me, I am open, of course, but it, it is to investigate for future. Okay, okay, perfectly all right. And while dealing with the analysis, suppose I would like to do the analysis associated with this. Do I need to have a detailed knowledge about the hydrodynamics or fluid dynamics, etc.? Yes, of course, it is necessary. Okay, thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you very much, sir, for us uh, for uh, answering all the questions. So, uh, with this, uh, if there is no question, is there any question from the audience, please? Any question, please? So, I hope there is no question, sir. So, let me take this opportunity. Thank you very much for sparing your valuable time for our uh, all participants, uh, all authors. Uh, students as well as teachers. So thank you, thank you very much. In the nearest you, future, we are you. expecting uh, better association with you, maybe in terms of some research or maybe some collaborative activity. So I'm thank really you, thankful thank on behalf of Department of Mechanical Engineering and entire team RA ML uh, for uh, for your valuable time and valuable contribution thank you, to thank this you. conference. Thank you, thank you very thank much. Sir. Thank you, thank you very much. On any cooperation is welcome from my part. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.